Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's Maria. I'm a fine artist. I'm a portrait painter. I paint with oils. And I like painting in sets. So, for the last year, I've mainly been working on acidic portraits. I did a collection in May. And then I continued that collection in November, which is the best part about sets because it doesn't have to be one set done at once and then that's it. it can always come, I can always come back to it and do it again. For the last year, it's always been paintings of women with very toxic, acidic looking tones and colours. And they look amazing, but I wanted to try something a little more natural, a little more uh, simpler than that. Because the process of getting those pictures, getting those references and getting the paintings made took a very ordinate amount of time. I just wanted to try something different for an, the next set and I was thinking of trying still lifes. I actually did try to paint still life in late 2020, early 2021. It was a picture of a jar of Oreos with strawberries and that got me thinking. Why don't I just do a series of that? Berries and biscuits. I personally would use the word cookies but you know, berries and biscuits, alteration. And I'm also living in the UK, and the UK really do love their biscuits. So for this one, we already have the paint picture reference of strawberries and Oreos, so I wanted to do two more, and the first ones that came into my mind was blueberries and some chocolate biscuits, and then some blackberries with jammed biscuits. So yeah, consider this video the berries and biscuits set. It's been a really long time uh, since you saw that last clip. That was probably filmed back in March 2023, maybe April 2023. It is now January 2024. Now, the reason for that long break was because, well, it wasn't really a break, it was more. It was caused by a lot of interruptions, shall we say. I've had lots of family emergencies, needing to do a lot of emergency traveling. Then at one point, I had two injuries back to back and I had to move. I'm now in a new place. Yeah, it's just been a lot. But we're here now and the paintings are finished. How do you like my hair? This is my natural hair, by the way. My original plan was to do a weekly update on the process of each of the paintings, but uh, that didn't work out in the end, as you can see. So uh, what I was gonna do was just smash together all the clips of the time lapse of each of the paintings and just give a commentary like this. Without further ado, let's get into the whole Berries and Biscuits saga and what came of it towards the end. So as you know, I had already taken the picture of the strawberry and Oreo one and I decided that for the other two, I was going to take them in the exact same location, which was not that difficult of a decision to make because at the time I was living in a studio and I only had one window, <laughs> one source of natural light, and only one table beside it with a solid background. Because the strawberry and Oreo one had a jar, I wanted each of them to have their own object to go with them. So for the blueberries and chocolate biscuits, I went for a bowl, and I had to use blue tack to keep the bowl upright. The photo shoot went pretty good. Well, I kind of experimented with the layout of the biscuits, the layout of the berries, and I had so many great pictures that came out of it. I only had one that I really, really liked, and it, by, by I liked it, it was just the one closest to what my vision of this painting was going to be. You know, the composition was nice, the colors looked nice, the balance, it balanced out very well. There was just one small problem. Uh, out of all those pictures, that was the only one that was blurred. I know. I thought in the end doesn't matter because it's just to be a blueprint to help me put together the piece. I ended up editing the picture, adding a lot more saturation because I really wanted the blueberries to look very, very blue. And it helped also adding some contrast to the picture. So I find in general, most people when using a reference for any painting you're making, to just add a little bit of contrast to help you find the values better or to determine the values better. Now, speaking of, when it came to taking pictures of the blackberry one, even though like the strawberry one, like the blueberry one, it was taken at the exact same 
location, the outcomes of all three look very different from each other in terms of the color. The blackberry one I chose a tea cup. I had a tea for one cup which was a white and gold tea set. Um, it was a gift from my mom so I decided to use that as the container, the source for this piece. I ended up using a paper towel to fill in most of the teacups so that the berries could look like they were overflowing. Uh, they don't give you that many blueberries in a box, um, so I decided to improvise. Rearranging the berries and biscuits several times, I had loads of different choices, but in the end I decided to go with this one. It did end up looking much darker than expected, especially when adding to the contrast, but I did want it to be, I did want the blackberries to be very defined. I wanted them to be a bit on the purple side because of how light the, the table was, how light the teacup was, how bright the bis biscuits, biscuit, because of how bright the biscuits looked, the overall composition ended up looking a lot darker than expected. But I thought, why not? Because then for the set, it kind of goes from light to dark gradually. So now, let us move on to the painting process. So I typically like to paint on wood, just your typical plywood. Some of these canvases I make myself, I also did a favor for one of my lecturers so he ended up making me several of these both in size A4 and a freeze. but these particular ones that I use for the canvas, they're different to the ones I'm holding right now because this one is definitely made by my, this one was definitely made by my lecturer because it's A, it's a lot heavier and B, the, the width at the back, the one for the actual berries and biscuits painting was a lot thinner. Those ones were ordered online. The reason why I chose those was because I they were lighter, they were a lot lighter and that's something you, you have to consider, especially for when you have to shift the, them up, the weight of the canvas will matter, trust me, especially with price. And because each of these paintings were size A4, so about this size, I thought it would be best to aim for lighter, for it to be as light as possible. Each painting to prime it up, these ones have already been sanded down so they're quite smooth in texture. I would usually recommend about two layers of gesso. One other thing I do is I add a light layer of burnt umber. That neutralizes the canvas because white is a very harsh color and it's very bright and light and it's very difficult to see what color actually looks like. So it's good to neutralize the canvas with a grey or a medium brown or something, so that's what I ended up doing as well before I started with the painting. Starting with the blueberry painting, the first thing I did was I painted the background, which was the wall and the table surface. And then while the surface was still wet, I added the shadows to where I knew the blueberries would lap be. Adding the shadows onto the table surface while it was still wet helps blend it in easier so it seems a little bit more seamless, that was the intention behind it and it just looks more natural overall. Now would be a good time to talk a bit about my camera. This lovely camera I am filming on right now. When filming standard, it should be able to film for about half an hour, 28 minutes. When filming with a time lapse, I can get it to push for about 45 to 50 minutes, which is actually just 10, 20 seconds playback. That means that there have been several times throughout this painting process where I would be lost in the moment or very immersed in my art and the camera would stop filming and I'd forget to press record again. Yeah. Um, keep that in mind in case these time lapse jump and it looks like a whole chunk of painting has been done and it has not been filmed. That is my bad. I'm sorry. Hopefully one day I'll be able to afford a camera that can film longer sessions and also doesn't require a time lapse in order to capture it all. Having said that, um, the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because I had also added the main colors of the bowl before, after the camera had stopped. So in this next clip, you see me going straight to adding shadows inside of the biscuit and blending the colors of the bowl together. First layer of blueberries, I added a single solid color just so I could mark where they each were individually and then I had intentions to add the values, shadows, highlights. By painting the biscuits, I painted them two-toned. I painted wherever the shadow of the bowl or 
of where the berries were in a darker brown and then anything that was exposed by the window light in a lighter brown. I just thought it would be the easiest way to mark it out, mark out where the values were straight on was the biscuits but not with the berries. Don't know why. It was then that I realized adding the darker color to the berries and to the biscuits, I noticed that the background looked a lot darker. So I ended up adding a second coat just to lighten it up and look a bit, you know, matches it a bit better. Then I, doing so, I retouched the surface. I also ended up retouching the shadows, including adding the shadows of the bowl and the berries, which I forgot the first time around, or I didn't do it dark enough at least. Then when that was dry, I ended up adding another coat to the bowl and to the berries, kind of muting and darkening the colors just a little because I felt like I was going a bit too bright to start off with. You'll see I'll change my mind again later on. So let's move on to the strawberry painting. Same as with the blueberry, I started with the background, but I found this one a lot more difficult because uh, whilst the blueberry one was a bit darker and also easier to see the difference between where the wall starts and where the table begins, in the strawberry and Oreo one, it's very difficult. They're very light backgrounds, almost white, and yet you don't want to start with white. That's too harsh. So there were several backs and forth between the table and then remixing and then going for the wall, then making sure the wall wasn't too light or the same color as the table, etc, etc. Eventually, I found a color I was satisfied with. I did not paint the biscuits with any values. I just went over the dark layers with a single solid color, but with the strawberries, I did add a bit of value to them. And then I outlined the jar and placed in the first colors of like the lid and the metal. And then we get to me starting the Blackberry one. By the time I started the Blackberry one, I had done so much traveling in between. I had several emergencies that had to become, and through all the stress, I ended up having a injury on my hip and the doctors told me to rest. With a lease ending and needing to find somewhere to stay, it was not the right time to be resting in my books. But once I recovered, on the day I recovered, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna start painting. Let's do the Blackberry one. And so like all the others, I started painting on the surface and this table surface. And it's not a big painting, I'm not doing big movements, just little back and forth swatches on a, doing a bit of a dark grey and then somewhere through that I ended up getting a massive spasm in my in the on the right side of my diaphragm and I could not move from my seat everything hurt all the way down my back it was difficult to breathe and it was I couldn't get up from my seat so I couldn't turn around to switch off the camera so it was all color and film you can see me kind of looking over uh, that was me trying to call people, get help, um, trying to keep my composure. I'm glad that uh, my ugly crying face was not caught too much on camera. But then to keep myself calm, I ended up just continuing painting the back of uh, the table because I used the paint uh, swatches to control my breathing until help came. That caused me to stay in bed for another few weeks. It ended up just being a spasm which caused my body to go into a bit of a panic and shock and then it just was a bad sprain just sprained my diaphragm a little so it was very difficult to laugh breathe you know basic human things like moving but i'm recovered i'm better <laughs> that's the important thing but by the time i had recovered we had to move you can see we found a place in the end and it's a two bedroom so this bedroom is now the art studio. Still working out the kinks such as the filming place, still working out the lighting. It's a quite dark room as you can see. It doesn't have many furniture, hence the bit of the echo still, but I do love it. It's also so cold, hence the mittens. You can probably see my dressing gown in the back. I usually wear that while I'm painting as you'll see. But yeah, after settling down it was time to continue on with the painting. So starting back with the blueberry, the important thing I thought from then on was just to make sure I was adding the right values and highlights. I particularly had fun adding the subtle but very significant highlights to each individual blueberry. I think that really helped them come to life. Um, please excuse the exposure, I was still getting used to the filming and this window gets the afternoon sunlight and it can be very harsh, particularly on that day, so please excuse the exposure. The strawberry painting was the one I ended up struggling with the most. The reason being was because I could not get the strawberries and Oreos to look anything close to realistic. There was no way to incorporate depth, depth, depth. Especially when looking at the reference, you know, I kept debating how to 
add value to the Oreos, but they're quite flat looking in the painting as they do in the reference. So I was really struggling with that. And the strawberries went back and forth with the seeds. They went back and forth with how bright they had to be, how much shadow needed to be in them. Whichever way I went around them, they just didn't quite look right yet. So I definitely, out of the three of them, that was definitely the one I struggled with the most. But at least the jar looked better, uh, especially once I added shine to the glass. That kind of brought my faith back in the painting. That was just my signal to keep going. Once the highlights were added to the lid, the metal of the jar opening, all that, that's when the painting actually started looking pretty all right. And then finally, it was back to the Blackberry since my injury. I definitely felt nervous picking that thing up, but it definitely needed to continue because it was much further behind than the other two. So once I finished doing the surface, I began painting the teacup and saucer, made sure I added both the value and the shadow straight away. I was kind of rushing it a bit, making sure, making sure I could catch up with them. I added the first color for both the cookies and the Blackberries. Um, again, please excuse the exposure, it was another harsh sunlight day and I wasn't, I'm still working around which is the best angle to film. I wasn't sure which direction to go was the best outcome of the painting. The berries were looking quite dark, but the biscuits were also so much more complex to paint than I had envisioned. I didn't know how to, I don't know how best to say it, to paint each individual ball? Is that what you call them? The little ball berries? Droplets, 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 the droplets. Um, so I ended up painting each individual one a different shade of purple, just a slightly different one alteration so I could be able to see the difference of where one starts and the other one ends. Meanwhile, I was also really fighting with the biscuits. It was very difficult to find the right shade of yellow because if you look at the reference, even though it looks yellow, staring at it blankly, if dissecting the colors, you realize that it's sort of a greenish yellow, a green gray yellow in certain areas, and then an orange brown where the sunlight is a bit better, where the lighting is a bit better, sorry. I also found it difficult to get the blend, to blend all these colors in one tiny thing, because even on a small um, A4, these bear biscuits were so small to paint the details of, because each of them, each of those like creases, waves, were different shades and it just went on forever, longer than I wanted it to and I was really fighting to get them to look right. Then we were getting to the home stretch. I had had about enough with this. I have so many other painting ideas in mind and I've just been working on this series for almost a year now. It had been 10 months, give or take and I was just through, I decided to just accept that they're not going to be the perfect paintings I had originally intended, but to keep going anyway. So for the strawberry, I, that was the one I wanted to tackle with first, it was the one I was the most unsatisfied with, and I did just realize that the Oreos especially were not going to get any better, so I quickly decided to exaggerate the highlights. Uh, I did a little bit on the rim of the Oreo, and then I made sure to add some white to the highest points of each of the berries. The reference doesn't have it, but it was, I just figured it was the right way to go about it. And it did help make the painting look a little bit better, look a little bit more realistic, even though not perfect. For the blackberry, um, I ended up highlighting each individual droplet and oh my gosh, did that look so much better. It ended up becoming my favorite despite it taking a lot longer to catch up with the others, but it just brought the painting to life and it looked so much better just from those little highlights. Um, and then of course I quickly finished up with the teacup, adding the decor that was on the original reference picture and also just accepting that the berry biscuits in this one were probably not going to look as great as I intended, but at least make them look presentable was my thought process. Finally, because the highlights had helped the berries in the last few paintings, I debated where to put them in the blueberries as well. I did try a few, but I did discover very quickly that it just looked a little too harsh. Blueberries are quite matte berries, and the reference definitely didn't show it. It could just be because the image was blurred, but in the end I decided not to exaggerate the highlights on this one, um, but I ended up touching up the bowl a bit instead. So, <laughs> that's, that was... That was that. <laughs> the Berries and Biscuits series, set, collection, still not sure what to call them, was finally finished after 
almost a year of trying to finish them. So let's have a review of them and give, of me, give you my final thought. So for the first one, I thought we'd start with the painting that started all, which was the Strawberry and Oreo one. You can see how bright it is in contrast with the rest of the rest of the frame. I don't know if that's just how bright it is. Remember how I said earlier about how difficult it was trying not to make the background almost white, but also trying to follow the reference as best of my ability. It's not terrible. I think you can see the potential that I had with this painting. The jar looks amazing. I think that's definitely the strongest point of the painting. I particularly love the slight highlights on the glass. I think that's what really um, brought my faith back into this painting. Uh, the weakest point would be definitely the Oreos. I tried several times. It's starting to actually look a bit muddy from how many layers I put on the biscuits. I don't know if you can see that up close. Or actually, you know what? I'll just put like a little picture up close to show you what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, if people know what it is, if people can look at it and go, yeah, that's an Oreo, that's the job done. Yeah, I just wish it a little, looked a little better than it does. Lastly, for the berries, I actually think they don't look too bad. They're definitely my first time painting store berries with oil. I think if it weren't for the white areas, the whole painting would look a lot flatter, a lot weaker. I don't know how, I, I don't know how to do painting reviews in the end. Do I give them ratings? Like, should I rate them based on outcome, based on composition, based on color, based on, um, I don't know, um, other areas? If so, overall, I'm not, I'm not upset with this painting, you know, it's not my, what I hoped it turned out to be, but for everything that this painting has witnessed me go through in the year and try to accomplish, I think this painting actually looks good. I still can't stop staring at like this area. This area I definitely think is like the strongest point of the painting. It's definitely my favorite part. Yeah, it's not terrible. For the next one, let's go into the blueberry one. Uh, this was the first one I took. A lot of people who have come by or seen these paintings in person have definitely like flocked more to this one. That was probably before the highlights on the blackberry, we'll get to that. But yeah, again, the biscuits look a little bit weak. I used bourbons and you can barely make out the bourbon like writing on the biscuits. The highlight, I, I again, like I said, I tried to contemplate exaggerating highlights on this painting. In the end, I'm glad I didn't. Yes, that does make the biscuits look a bit flat, but I think it did do its service to the blue blueberries themselves. The bowl, the bowl was a bit more complicated than I thought. You'd think for a bowl, it'd be a bit straightforward, but there was actually so many shadings and layers that went into it that it was just, it looks good. I think it's, there's room for improvement. There was room for it to turn out better, of course, but overall, I'm not mad about this painting either. I do love the shadows on the surface. I do love the blueberries themselves, you know, you can make out everything that it is, and it just, I'm not mad. I think it looks great. Last but not least, we have the blackberry one. I definitely think this one turned out really well, very specifically the blackberries themselves. Um, if you look closely, you can tell that I did two layers of highlights, one being a very light lilac kind of color, and then once going in um, on certain specific areas was titanium white. And I think that just made the painting come together. I was, I had my doubts, but I think it came through. The biscuits at the end of the day do not look terrible. They don't look too bad, but yeah, they're not my favorite out of the three of them. Like all three of them definitely prove that I need to work on my technique when it comes to cookies. That's the moral lesson of this video, but I can paint fruit. At least I can paint the fruit. And also the teacup, I think the handle Again, not terrible, but it does look very um, 2D, in my opinion. Definitely could have been blended a little bit more. My painting skills with metal are usually better than this. However, the teacup and saucer themselves, considering that teacup only had two layers and the design on top of it only has one, it looks pretty decent. Um, it definitely looks very close to the reference picture. I'm not mad. <laughs> My final thoughts are the whole reason I wanted to do a still life series was because I had been doing portraits for the last two years and wanted to try something a little different. I also wanted to try something more natural instead of using my painting usual acidic toned 
pieces so I'm glad that I took the leap of faith to try it out. I think next time I would have to do some study samples of the actual individual objects themselves. I also know I'm probably a bit too lazy to do that anyway. <laughs> I also knew when making them that I wanted this them to be my very first YouTube video. That was my intention when I did the first clip that you saw back in March. I am glad that I followed through because one thing I was beating myself up about was how long it was taking and whether it was a sign that I shouldn't follow through and do this start making videos for this channel but i am glad that i followed through with that as well um no one's first youtube video is ever the best one best to post one than not post at all <laughs> but i hope it to be the first of many i have so many painting projects in mind i am already working on the next one i just hope it doesn't take a whole 10 months to finish <laughs> thank you so much for s watching this video be sure to like, comment, and share. If you would like to, I uh, have prints of the Unfinished Finish series. We currently have a deal on my website where you automatically get three for the price of two or six for the price of four. So be sure to check that out. Let me know if you would like prints of this series. Uh, that, could be, that could be arranged. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.